So the bed's aligned for our first print. Next up, we're gonna raise the Z-axis. Let's see if we can get it to go up. We're gonna raise the Z-axis so that we can manually extrude some filament before we actually press print. The reason we're gonna do that is to make sure that any contaminants, any materials, any machining that were left over from the factory, that we get those out before we actually start printing and to make sure that the hot end can come up to temperature to double check that the extruder stepper motor is working, go through all those checks before we start printing. So let's go back to the home screen, <laughs> go to temperature, and we're going to set the extruder temperature to 210. Okay. And you can see it says stop preheating. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and set the bed temperature to 60. There we go. So you may hear some whining. Um, particularly from the fan as it comes on. The only thing you wanna check with the fan is that the fan shroud itself is up high enough that it's actually gonna clear the extruder. Uh, this fan is not really held in terribly well by these clips and in shipping, and when you first unbox the unit, this fan assembly can tend to shift uh, down a bit too far. So. You just want to make sure that the fan assembly is above the bottom of the extruder. Uh, it doesn't have to be above it by much, but just make sure that it's not falling completely below it. So you can see as it's heating up for the first time here, looks like there was some filament that they were using to test the printer, which is a pretty good sign, but it's not the filament we're going to be using. So. I'm just gonna to continue to wait for it to get up to temperature. So it looks like we're getting up to temperature now. We're at 206. It's close enough for, for doing kind of a test extrusion. So now I'm going to go back to the main menu and we're gonna to go to move and we're gonna come down to the extruder and we are going to extrude some material. So if you pay attention to which direction it's being fed in, and you want to turn the dial in the direction to feed it, and there we go, we're getting material coming out. Now you noticed when I was feeding it too quickly, you can hear that, that skipping sound. That means there's too much pressure being built up in the hot end itself, um, and it's not able to move that much material. It's okay because we're doing a manual extrusion right now. Um, if you hear that while it's printing, then you have something wrong. Uh, either your filament isn't properly set at the correct size or your steps aren't correctly set. Uh, but this is looking good. We've run th some filament through it. Yeah, looks like our bed's up to temperature, materials up to temperature. So I'm just gonna pull this out. And then we are gonna go back home. We're gonna go to the print menu. We're gonna select our print and begin printing. Now, PLA is a much more forgiving material than others. Um, so the default settings on the firmware should be just fine to get this printed. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how this works out. The number one thing, I hope you pay super special attention to this, is especially when you're beginning with the printer, never leave it alone. It's tempting to treat this as you would an inkjet printer where you set the print job and let it go and walk away. Don't do it. 
so many things can go wrong on these printers and you want to be there when they go wrong. So, you know, put this in a place in your house where you can keep an eye on it, tempting to put it in a back closet and leave it there where nobody can see it, but don't do it. All it takes is one time for something to go catastrophically wrong and, you know, you can burn the house down, you can short out your outlets, um, any number of bad things can happen. You know, the best case is you ruin your print and waste some material. Stick around, check on it. You don't have to watch every second of it, but keep an eye on it. You know, stop by every five, 10 minutes. Later on, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a network print server called Octoprint, where you can use a webcam to remotely monitor your prints, but don't be tempted to leave it alone. Um, and do not ever, ever, ever print overnight while you're asleep always be nearby so that you can unplug the printer in the worst case scenario if something goes really wrong. The other thing is if you don't have something like Oct Octoprint set up yet, keeping an eye on the print will help you see if something does go wrong. The times when it's going to go wrong is either right at the beginning, so that first layer or two, or when you're at points in the print that can cause big issues. So any places where you have lots of overhangs, any places where there's, it goes thin to thick, um, you'll wanna keep an eye on the print in those places to make sure that extrusion is happening properly, that something doesn't get nicked, that there's no curling or warping, everything stays adhered to the bed. It will improve the quality of the prints, it will protect the printer, and it will help you learn faster about what's going on. So it looks like now we're nearing about a third of the way through this print. Um, so far, everything looks pretty darn good on it. Uh, we're just starting to create the bridge supports in those voids. Um, so we've got, you know, another, I guess about 20 minutes or so uh, left on this print. So I'm gonna let this go and I'll come back when we're done and we'll head on to the next step, which is gonna be installing this spacer into the carriage here, which is gonna require disassembling the printer. So that'll be fun. Uh, and then adding a glass bed to the print surface, which will give us much easier, lower maintenance printing, as well as a perfectly flat surface and will really open the door to being able to print ABS material reliably. So we're gonna switch over from the PLA to the ABS. I'll walk you guys through how to do a material swap, which can be fraught with peril. Um, lots of people jam the print head when they're doing material swaps. So I'll show you how to do it. It's never foolproof, but this is a way that is very repeatable and minimizes the chances that you're gonna jam the filament or get something caught. So, see you in a minute. All right, so back, got the part off the printer, uh, had to do a little bit of cleanup on it. The support structure was a little bit more joined than I would have liked, but everything came off pretty cleanly and I think we've got a good mechanical part uh, to install. So. Next thing to do now is actually take this thing apart and put in the spacers. So first step is gonna unplug it. No power is good. And then remove the filament. So I'm actually going to leave the spool connected. I'm not gonna to try to, to pull the, the filament out for right now, just to save some time later. So. Put that over there, take the spool holder back off, and we'll get started with disassembly. So basically, what we need to do to get this thing apart is we need to take off the bottom panel, and once the bottom panel is removed, we should be able to access the bolts and screws up underneath to take the side 
panel of this tower off so that we can actually get access to the Z stop to put the spacer in. So all of the screws on the bottom panel are all Phillips head. So all you need for this is a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these bottom panel screws. Okay, so now that we've got the bottom panel off, as I bring it away, you'll see that the main board is actually attached to it, with all the screws attached to it, or with all the wiring, rather, attached to it. And what I'm going to do, rather than uh, completely disconnecting this, it's not really necessary, so we need to take off the back vertical panel to get access to the Z-stop put the spacer in. There's going to be three screws on the top and three screws on the bottom that we need to remove to do that. So in this case, uh, they're going to be the three screws here that are all inset and then the three corresponding Phillips head screws on top of the unit um, that we'll need to take out. So let's hop to that. Now you want to be careful when you're taking out the bottom most screw that you don't bend or break the power socket wiring. So if you need to tilt the unit up or put it in a different position so that you can get to that screw more easily, definitely go ahead and do that. Okay, and now we're going to take out the three screws on top. So that's just this guy, this guy, and this guy. We're not going to mess with any of the any of the socket screws because um, we're only taking the plate off. So we're not we're not going to upset any of the z-axis rails or the and don't lose the the lock nuts that come on all these screws. We'll need to put them back on when we put the screws back in. There we go. And now if I did it all right, this back plate should just slide right off. Let me turn this around for you. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So this is the back plate and it should come right out. There we go. So now you can see the Z-stop in there. This is what we're gonna put our bracket onto, uh, this guy. And it just sits in this position and it should, should slide uh, right into place. So let's see if the printer is well enough calibrated for it to do that. There we go. Slid right in. Um, just wanna line it up Make sure that it's in place. Looks good. There we go. And that should give us uh, plenty of height to put our glass bed on now. So while you're in here actually, before we put the, the side panel back on again, uh, it's worth just having a visual look, making sure that the, um, the lead screw for the Z axis doesn't show any uh, major amounts of rust on it, uh, that it's not bent uh, or deformed in any visible way, making sure that the linear rails look good, have lubrication on them. So everything looks, looks good, everything's connected tightly. Um, just give everything kind of a wiggle check and you know make sure there's nothing 
off from manufacturing before we put the plate back on. All right, so the plate goes back on, screw everything in, and we'll move on to actually putting the glass plate on the base. So I'll be back in just a minute.